There is a deadly disease killing nearly 700 Israelis every single month. And many of these victims don't even know that they're being hurt until it may be too late. It's a silent killer that affects every Israeli town and city, every religion, every social class. And I'm not talking now about COVID-19 or the Omicron variant. I'm talking about cigarette smoking. An official with Israel's health ministry just testified before a Knesset committee that 8,000 Israelis die annually from smoking and 10% of the deaths, 800 people, are killed from passive smoke, often called secondhand smoke. The health ministry says the ongoing COVID pandemic has made the situation worse because the stress, the economic activity, long periods of lockdowns and quarantines has made more people pick up the habit. One out of five Israelis is a casual or regular smoker, according to statistics. Now the Knesset Health Committee chairwoman is pledging to pass early next week a series of new anti-smoking bills. The bills would raise the minimum age for buying cigarettes in Israel to 21, require police to enforce anti-smoking laws rather than local municipal officials. Also, the legislation could change the status of open porches of apartments so residents can't smoke there outside, so neighbors won't be subjected to dangerous secondhand smoke. With me now is Israeli MK Alon Tal with the Blue and White Party. Thank you so much, sir, for being with me. In your mind, is the issue of passive smoking, secondhand smoke, is this a national crisis? Is this a top priority issue for you with public health? It is indeed a major issue for those of us who care about public health in Israel, passive smoking. Uh, Jeff, and I think it's very important that we had this hearing, and I commend the committee chair, uh, Edith Silman, on her bold statements, which I supported completely and supported in committee. Uh, it, first of all, let's uh, get some of these numbers, get some proportion. 8,000 Israelis die every year from smoking. That's 15 percent. It's far more that's going to die from COVID if you look back at 2021 in the year. And yet, somehow or other, there's a certain amount of complacency. Now, with regard to the passive smoking, which you've mentioned, first of all, there is the public health element, and people do die from that. But there's also a tremendous uh, nuisance factor. Uh, when the hearings were about to take place, my cell phone was deluged with, with messages and requests and complaints from citizens whose houses sit, literally stink because they li happen to have the bad fortune of living next door to a smoker. So there's both the public health element and hundreds of people do die every year, according to the Ministry of Health. And there's also many, many more whose lives are just unpleasant because they have to deal with the smell and the indignities of, of smoking so nearby them. But if you live in an apartment, you know, it's your apartment, why shouldn't you, under this new bill, why shouldn't you be able to go to your balcony, your patio, and smoke a cigarette? Well, I think it was Bernard, George Bernard Shaw who said, uh, your rights end where my nose begins. And that's exactly the issue here. I mean, we have to remember that smoking is not a, a neutral activity. It has grave implications for people around you. In the same way that we limit the kind of noise that somebody can make from their house. So if you could smoke and nobody would be aware of it, if you can go inside your bathroom, I don't know if there's some way to do that, that's just fine. But when you go out in the balcony and the smoke wafts up to the neighbors, that is unacceptable. I think in general, our committee realizes that because smoking is such a killer, we need to start being more proactive. Let's remember that uh, there has been some improvement. In the past, 40 percent of Israelis used to smoke. Today, it's down to about 20 percent. But I'm still gravely concerned about the youth. About 28 percent of the uh, young men who come into the army are intermittent smokers, only 18 percent uh, girls. In the Arab sector, we have over 35 percent. So there is also an ethnic and a gender component that we have to do. And apparently, education is not enough. So perhaps what we need to do, if so many people begin smoking when they come to military, service, raise that age up to 21, and maybe in that critical, uh, sensitive period, vulnerable period when people are given distress, 
save Israelis from this horrible addiction, which could very, very well kill them in the future. Sir, I'd like to expand on that point, if I could. You mentioned the army and the, you know, the conscription, the mandatory service for many Israelis. The legislation would raise the age to buy a pack of cigarettes to 21. I got to ask if you are old enough you know, to buy a lottery ticket at 18, if you are old enough to serve your country, to fight and die for your country, why can't you go if you want to go to the store and buy a pack of cigarettes at 18 anymore? This is indeed a paternalistic uh, legislative initiative, but I don't know anybody who started smoking when they were in the army who wouldn't be grateful in retrospect for a law which would have prevented them. Most people today who are smoking in their later ages view this as an addiction, an addiction which is very, very difficult to kick. And if we can uh, do what I believe is incumbent upon us to do to prevent hundreds of thousands of future adult Israelis from getting addicted in the army, that would make sense. We try to protect people in the army from the bullets of the enemies and the bombs of the enemies. We should pre pre prevent them also, protect, protect them from the cigarette uh, nuisance and menace as well. So I do think that we have a moral uh, grounding for do that. I would also add that the context for this is very important. Let's remember that New Zealand just became the first country in the world to phase out smoking altogether. They're going to ban cigarettes within 10 years. And this is something to, I think, to aspire to. Israel's a country which has always put a premium on human life and health. And we know that 15% of the deaths in general, and about half of the deaths of people under 45 come from smoking, I think we haven't done enough. We have to call cigarettes what they are. They're killers, and we have a responsibility society to do everything we can to minimize exposure of the population to them. Mm. Professor Alon Tall with the Blue and White Party in the Knesset, thank you so much for being with me. The legislation is set to be introduced for the first time early next week, and the debate will then begin. Thank you so much for giving us your opinion and, yes, and insight. Indeed. And this... And this and this government of change will make this additional change in the same way we're fighting against excessive consumption of soft drinks and the high sugar content, and we're trying to cut back on a, a range of polluters. Cigarettes is the next in line, which needs to be far more regulated. I look forward to passing that legislation. Professor, thank you so much for being with us. Great to have you on the Zoom In Show.